In the process of pursuing bonsai, it is really challenging to put a tree in a confined environment and expose it to the random acts of mother nature and expect that tree to thrive. But the temptation is always there to do it. The payoff is obvious in the enjoyment plus the contextual representation and the connection we form with the tree. And a greenhouse is kind of the tool to do bonsai at a high level that allows us to extend our season, have a little bit more control and say over what our trees experience. And there's no reason that that greenhouse can't give you that kind of capacity without looking beautiful too. And this was really the backbone and the concept to the second iteration of Mirai's greenhouse. Function, the capacity to extend our season and control the environmental influences on our trees, and beauty, an indoor gallery over the dormant season where bonsai can continue to be appreciated. Now, coming back from Japan and my apprenticeship, my concept for greenhouses was the workhorse that Mr. Kimura utilized and the production greenhouses that I had in college. And the first greenhouse at Mirai was absolutely nuts and bolts, a green industry, galvanized pipe, plastic covered, monster of an industrial form. It was not beautiful, but it was incredibly functional, incredibly durable. And it really allowed me to establish myself at Mirai as a bonsai professional. I love that greenhouse. I spent so much time in that greenhouse. And that greenhouse slowly but surely became the least attractive part of Mirai as a garden and a gallery for the exploration of bonsai as an art form. And so in recognizing that we had grown out of the initial greenhouse both in size as well as in our maturity in the pursuit of beauty and aesthetics, it started to breed an ambition and a desire to create something that could display our trees and serve the same function of controlling the environment over the winter season in a much more beautiful way. And that was the beginning of Greenhouse 2.0. Now the greenhouse length of wall is divided into 20 foot bays with a post sunk in, a five foot diameter, five foot deep cylinder of concrete. Strong, efficient, and massive. But even that was not necessarily enough to create the kind of sheer strength that this long linear structure needed. And this is where we broke that 20 foot bay into 10 foot sections and we use the diagonal repetition of pattern to create more sheer strength on a smaller level and allow this greenhouse to withstand all of the elements it's going to experience. Now, one of the design elements that I abide by at Mirai as much as I possibly can, and as much as my experience, as much as my technical uh, capacity, as much as my willpower will allow me, is to blur the boundary of the interior and the exterior. And a greenhouse is already a very, very gray, blurry line. Because it's this thing that has a temperature in excess of the exterior, but it's still not comfortable to live in, it's got gravel as a floor, it's got plant debris as its sort of interior scape. I wanted to pull the stone that I've utilized throughout the garden, both around the exterior of the greenhouse as well as into the interior. And I think as far as becoming a space that housed bonsai functionally, 
that's effortless, but making it look beautiful, that was the challenge. That was the challenge of how do you create a space in the dormant period when trees are packed in to max capacity that still looks intentional and still looks beautiful. And incorporating stone inevitably raises that level and brings the exterior into an interior space. The final design element that we had to select was the glazing material. Glass is heavy, glass is expensive, glass breaks. Plastic is cheap, plastic is permeable, plastic is puncturable, plastic fails very, very quickly. The middle ground to these two outliers of glazing material was the triple wall poly. It's strong enough to withstand branching and twigs falling on it. It's light enough to require less structure to hold it. It's durable, the price point was correct, and handled in the right way with an open expanse of that polycarbonate sheeting. It looks very beautiful, transparent, and incredibly modern. And that was the combination of elements that we needed to meet this structure in terms of its function and its design where it's at, being efficient and looking beautiful while doing so. The big challenge to building a bonsai garden at Mirai from the very beginning has been this hillside that we're on. Now this is also one of the big advantages, right? This is a south facing hillside that gives us tremendous exposure. So what we did is we utilized a series of boulders to retain that hillside, big granite pieces, heavy, cumbersome, but of the most beautiful aesthetic for the mountain ranges that are closest to my heart, the Rocky Mountains and the Sierra Nevadas. And we use the shape of the granite to start to move and direct the water through constructed French drains that existed in the ground in front of the greenhouse and carry the water across it, past it, and out of the realm of being around its foundation. Every point of design is a process and a combination of function and aesthetics. And at every point of this greenhouse, I've taken all of my experience building Mirai and all of my experience of everywhere I've been before and applied it in an intense fashion to this particular structure. I could not be more psyched with how it has functioned and how it has turned out. And the granite was one of the best parts of the entire construction process. Now, one thing that the original greenhouse taught me is wood benches inside of a greenhouse environment are an absolute cesspool of disease and proliferation of pathogens, as well as structurally inferior because they degrade so quickly, faster than the external environment, in fact. And that's what gave rise to a more mobile, more beautiful, and more long-term sustainable solution in the core 10 benches. Now, these benches had to stand up with a lot of weight on them as linear runs. And this is what created the notion of these looping legs that overlapped the stone, that created angular bays, and started to really engage the viewer in a lot of different opportunities to present treats. This gave rise to a more roundabout movement and line through the greenhouse instead of an aisle straight down the middle. So the airflow in Mirai's greenhouse is like one of the central characteristics and where we're at in the Pacific Northwest with the kind of moisture and relative humidity we experience over the winter season, 
we have got to prioritize airflow or we will have a horrific fungal issue inside of a closed environment like a greenhouse. And the airflow starts with our fan system moving the air and constantly keeping that air mobile and refreshing the carbon dioxide concentration as well as the oxygen concentration, drying out the leaf surface area and continuing to move plants to transpire. And we have those fans moving in opposite directions of each other so that we create a cyclical circulation of air that not only drives the movement and keeps the plant surfaces dry, but also moves the heat where we can actually open the south facing side of the greenhouse to water the backside of trees, to allow more open airflow to occur through the greenhouse and to piggyback on the fan system to use those open doors as air intake to further more rapidly exchange the air from outside to inside. We have the capacity to remove the ridge pieces that close up the corners as it approaches the peak of the roof so that we can draw cold air along the central ridge of the greenhouse and take heat away should we want to cool this structure down. And finally, in order to be able to control each of the four quadrants of this greenhouse, independent of each other in terms of heat, airflow, and sun exposure, we have a screening system that we've set up out of Shiplap Cedar where we can fully open or we can fully close each bay off to that delivery of airflow, that perpetuation of wind, and a high delivery of heat which starts to break up the greenhouse into independent units and allows us to completely customize the airflow, the heat, the temperature, and all of the elements that we're exposing the trees in those bays to. Now, one of the things that makes a cold shelter actually quantifiable as a greenhouse is the presence of heat and the ability to control the temperature. Inside of Mirai's greenhouse, we've chosen very specialized heaters that burn the fuel source in an incredibly clean fashion. So we have the capacity to close this facility for several days in a row, heat it to the desired temperature, and the cleanliness at which that fuel source is burned does not accumulate a toxic gas that could potentially harm the plants inside of this space. These are greenhouse heaters registered for the green industry functioning off of propane, and we have two heaters in opposing corners. Now the heaters of this greenhouse are different in size because we wanted to strategize should one heater in ultimately extreme conditions not be able to keep up, we would just like to have a second heater as an emergency option and backup, but also a second heater that could supplement the function of the first heater if for whatever reason we got into some sort of subarctic condition and we really did need to be running heaters constantly to keep up with the temperature gradient. The lights inside of this greenhouse are low, uh, they're dimmable, and they're designed to just cast a kiss of light over the trees that exist on the benches, and that's completely intentional because that light interplay of shadow and light, illumination and dark, leaves the viewer or the person experiencing this space to fill in those gaps, to see things that don't really exist. And for me walking through this, each night that I walk through this space, and I walk through here almost every night, the illumination triggers or shows me different things about the trees, about the space, uh, design opportunities. It's just a really engaging, interactive component of the greenhouse that from the very beginning, I always wanted to incorporate. It's a part of the way that art is shown. It's a part of the way a gallery space presents that ambiance of the environment. And, and I think the light in here is, is maybe the most significant element that casts the entire sort of feel and vibe of the greenhouse at night. It is, it is a very special, highly controllable element that absolutely elevates this space to uh, you know, a degree I have not seen 
another bonsai facility. The greenhouse at Mirai is not just a functional facility, and the greenhouse at Mirai is not just a beautiful structure. The greenhouse at Mirai embodies the ethos that every single thing that we create that is good design embraces the necessity to function and look good while doing so. Each point of that structure is considered from an aesthetic perspective as well as how can it be the most usable towards the execution of the bonsai practice. And I couldn't be prouder of what we've built. If you ever have a chance to come and visit us, we look forward to walking you through it and hoping, hoping in your time spent inside of that facility that you're able to look at every single detail and understand the thought process that went behind it. Because this has become the ethos and the guidepost for how we pursue this craft and art form at Mirai. And the greenhouse is just another extension of what we believe and practice in our pursuit of bonsai as an art form. Thanks for joining us and we hope you enjoyed. We'll see you next time you come visit us.